there is a swelling red wave that is going to be taking over the United States in the 2020 elections. This is demonstrated just the other day in both Wisconsin and California. Republicans won handily over their Democratic opponents in special elections for congressional seats. Specifically, let's focus in on California. This is the first time in 28 years that Republicans have managed to flip a formerly blue seat red. Now, I'm sure that Democrats will point to the fact that that's partly because Katie Hill, who formerly had the seat, was removed in disgrace for sexual conduct with one of her employees. So you have to, they're going to try to excuse it with that. Nevertheless, Katie Hill had won the seat by nine percentage points. That flipped. I believe that her challenger won it by 14% plus. Mike Garcia has taken over the seat. The Republicans have flipped that. This is evidence of the coming red wave that is sweeping America. Just the fact that California has turned slightly reddish for whatever reason is just one piece of the evidence. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay out a series of reasons as to where this red wave is coming from. Maybe the Democrats can do something about it in order to stem it in the process. I used to be a Democrat until just recently. So as long as we're talking about the coming red wave, and I do believe that the Republicans are very likely to take the House in what is going to be a sweep of the American electorate. Now we're going to discuss the reasons why there's going to be this coming red wave. First of all, you see the walkaway campaign. A lot of people said that these are bots originally, that these aren't real people. These are real people. I have my walkaway video. It's right here. I'm linking to it right there. And there are a lot of them. And the more that these videos are disseminated, the more people are walking away. There's nothing on the left-hand side of the aisle. Yes, there are people that are never Trumpers, that were Republican, that will not vote for the man for reasons that regarding you know his character or whatever else they don't like about him. That's fine. I acknowledge the fact that they're there. I don't see them. I don't see a groundswell of support for them. If you see some of the walkaway videos, a lot of them, a lot of the reasons cited are the fact that their friends started calling them evil when they didn't drink the leftist Kool-Aid, when they did not go along with the plot line that they were trying to offer from everything from Russiagate to diversity, inclusion, and equity, the die religion. There are a lot of people that say, hey, wait a second. I'm not so sure about that, and they cast them aside. As the Democratic Party, as the prevailing tone, at least that you hear in the press, comes out with these crazies, a lot of people that might have been on that side, which included me, have now decided to say, I don't want to be part of this. I used to be on the left-hand side of the aisle, central left. A lot of my ideas used to fall there. Now that that bell-shaped curve, according in the Democratic side of the party, has shifted and I'm now more on the right-hand side, according to them. I'm being called evil by those that are pulling it further left. I'm talking about the SJW types, the blue and purple hair type people that are yelling and screaming and calling everybody racist, evil, etc., etc. This is people definitely pushing people over to the right-hand side of the aisle. When you call somebody evil, you only embolden them to vote against you. It's a personal attack. It's not a discussion of ideas. And that might happen on the right, but it happens a lot more on the left. You see them shrieking continually in the news. You see them destroying property like Antifa does and denigrating anybody who just dares to disagree with them. It is a sad state of affairs that American politics have gotten into today. Nevertheless, again, that pushes people and then these people start making walkaway videos and once they've made that video that's basically cemented them in their minds that there's no way that they're going to vote for the Democratic Party. I myself am almost certainly going to vote for Donald Trump. I'm still considering the libertarian candidate because that's generally where my positions lie but in terms of voting for Joe Biden if perchance he does succeed in maintaining being the Democratic nominee and on the ballot which I have serious doubts about I'm just not voting blue. Furthermore, when Donald Trump is on the ticket, you are going to see Trump supporters come out in droves. As I mentioned, his support base is very 
enthused and has probably only grown. The number of people trickling away from him is much smaller than the people moving towards him as demonstrated by the number of walkaway videos. This is not something to be taken lightly. The groundswell of support for him is there. Furthermore, the excitement for Joe Biden simply isn't there. You take a look, Joe Rogan, who's a firm lefty and is a very admirable and intelligent man, and I really like hearing him discuss things, has stated that there's no way that he's going to vote for somebody with dementia. He would much rather vote for Donald Trump because this is about our country. That is part of the reason that I doubt that Biden will eventually be on the ticket. But the more and more time that passes toward, as we move towards closer towards November, it would be an utter mistake by the Democratic Party to dismiss him but that is still a strong possibility in my mind. Nevertheless, the groundswell of support for Joe Biden just isn't there. So then you're going to point out the fact that the Democrats actually took over the House in 2018. As I mentioned earlier, Donald Trump's name was not on the ticket. The Republican base did not turn out in droves. If you take a look in the pri Republican primaries, Trump earned so many more votes than his predecessors who were returning presidents like George, George W. Bush did, George H.W. Bush. He got so many more votes for people that didn't even have to come out to vote. My point is that the enthusiasm for Donald Trump is definitely there, and they are going to be re voting Republican down the ticket. This is part of the reason that the Democrats tried to impeach him. They took over the House in 2018 with promises to the electorate to do good for them. Instead, they engaged in nothing but partisan politics. It was Russiagate, Russiagate, Russiagate all the time. Everything that they could do to hamper the Trump's administration's effort, they did. Now you take a look at the COVID epidemic. Donald Trump was in the middle of impeachment when this was going on. Could that not have hampered his ability to react to the incoming epidemic? Yes, definitely. And the voters are probably going to see it that way. While he is trying to work on policies to benefit the nation, the Democrats are trying to impeach him. That does factor in, I think, in the minds of many a voter, I would imagine. Then you have the media. And the media has been caught lying many, many, many times. As I made a video specifically about Chris Cuomo and how he took Trump's remarks out of context to edit them to make him look like a horse's ass. And I showed, demonstrated how easy it is. This has been going on continually. And the awareness of this has risen amongst the electorate. Yes, there are going to be people that, are the, that just hate Trump with Trump derangement syndrome that aren't going to take any of this into account. And the man can do no good. I mean, he goes out and they kill Baghdadi, and they describe Baghdadi as an austere religious scholar, the head of ISIS, the top terrorist currently in the world, a man who has so much blood on his hands that executed so many people that likely killed people personally. And they describe him, the Washington Post, in a tweet, as, as in an article, a tweet, as a austere religious scholar. This is the narrative that the media is pushing, and a lot of Americans are very much fed up with it. And it builds and it builds and it builds. Then you have stuff, the whole anti-America stuff. You have Nancy Pelosi ripping up the speech that Donald Trump gave at the State of the Union on camera, caught on camera. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. In on it wasn't a spur of the moment thing. She thought about it. It was a political maneuver that's going to backfire. When this, you listen to some CNET, to CNET, a lot of people actually did call in and say that they were lifelong Democrats, that they were flipping Republican because they think the Democrats are disrespectful to the nation. A lot of people want us to be a nation. There are competing ideas as to what will benefit us as a nation. And this is the role of politics and how it should play out. But it's become so partisan and people are fed up with it. And the people with Trump derangement syndrome are so crazy and their inability to discuss ideas and that Donald Trump can only do something bad. When Donald Trump shuts, creates a travel ban and bans travel coming in from China, the Democrats scream that the travel ban is illegal, it's xenophobic, it's racist. And then when it turns out that it was the right play, they say, hey, Trump, why didn't you do more? The hypocrisy is so stunning. I mean, it isn't that stunning because it is politics. It's the way that politics have been conducted for a long time. But nevertheless, it is so one-sided right now that people see it. And I'm sure that it exists on the right. And a lot of people always say, why don't you point out things on the right? 
because right now the media is being driven by the left and the leftist politics are what are manifesting in the reports that people get on a daily basis. And it affects many people and many people's lives. And this idiot process of polarization is just tearing our country apart to the point where we can't even talk to each other. I personally have lost friends because, I, as I said before, I don't agree with those with Trump derangement syndrome. I want to be able to discuss things. When I say I want to wait for all the facts to come out in the Ahmaud Arbery case, people call me a racist. Do you think that that's going to move me to your side when all I'm saying is I want to wait for the facts to come out before I make a decision that I want to be fair because I've been burned by the media before? Do you think that that helps things? It doesn't. And this moves many people. Hey, I might not be a huge fan of Trump, but I'm definitely dislike you way more because you're attacking me personally, and now I'm voting for Trump. And this is the way that it's going for a lot of people. Then you have, again, as I said, Nancy Pelosi ripping up the speech. You have people like Lorena Gonzalez of San Diego that takes away jobs with her bill, AB5. And I mentioned this in another video I did about Elon Musk, and she said, F U yeah, F apostrophe C K, you know, F Elon Musk, she tweets out. This is a man who provides jobs for people. This is a man who's created these jobs through his ingenuity, his genius, and his ability to do the impossible. And, pe and politicians on the left are saying, F Elon Musk, because they know what's better for you. You don't think that this moves people away from you? That this moves people from your side who think that you're nuts? And rightfully so, because you know better than Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a freaking genius that's been proven time and time again. He deserves the support. He, even if you don't like him personally, he employs tens of thousands of people, 10,000 people in the state of California, I believe, alone. The Fremont factory that produces so many amazing products for Model S, Model X, and all the technology that they've developed that goes into it. And you say F Elon Musk because he wants to open up his factory because he doesn't want to be shut down, but the left wants you to lose your business because they know what's best for you. Because if you're in rural Minnesota, you should not be able to go out and without a mask and go hunting in the woods, but they want you to have a mask on. This is the absurdity of a one-size-fits-all policy that the left always wants to jam down people's throats. Look, again, we're talking about the red wave that is coming and emerging, and I'm trying to give you all the reasons why people that used to be more neutral or even on the blue side of the ocean, and now suddenly this red swell is coming in. And this is what's going to take place in the general election. You are going to see, in my opinion, unless something drastic changes, and the coronavirus was the opportunity that the Democrats had, but they want everybody to shelter in place. They don't want people to work. They want to give away free money. Meanwhile, they are inflating the crap out of the currency, and any savings account is going down to zero. Faith in the U.S. dollar is zero. You have to be able to produce something. And it's feeling that you produce something that is a magnificent feeling and part of being human. You feel like you're contributing. You feel like you're growing through whatever means that is for you. But the Democrats want you to shelter in place because they know what's best for you. You can't go to the beach and sit down and lay down, they say, in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, we're going to open up the beaches, but you can go to the beach. You can run. You can surf. But then you have to leave. That's not how going to the beach works. They want to prescribe everything instead of trusting people to go out there and protect themselves. The role of government is not to take care of you and to provide for you, but to allow the framework where you can do that for yourself in a fair manner, where opportunity is equalized to as much a possible degree as it can be. Look, I'm never going to have LeBron James jeans in terms of athletic ability and being able to 360 dunk. Same with LeBron James Jr. They were born into athletic gene privilege. I wasn't. I'm never going to have that opportunity because we're not all born equal in various things. That's okay. That's the way the world works. We should not try to counter nature. We should just try to level the playing field as much as we possibly can. Quality of opportunity. Okay. I hope that I've discussed with you the coming red wave that we're seeing through the nation. And if you guys like this content, share it with people. And if you think I'm wrong, leave me a comment. Peace, blessings, go for your subscribe.